In this Unreal Engine 5 2D game character movement tutorial, we're going to learn how to set up a 2D character and add basic movement to it. Now, I've already a 2D map created. I did that in another video, so go ahead and check out my another YouTube video if you haven't created a 2D map yet. But if you already have one in your project, let's go ahead and start with this tutorial. First off, we will need a character, of course, for this tutorial. And if you don't have one, you can always go to itch.io. There you can find a lot of 2D assets. And if you have your own character, you can use that in this tutorial as well. The one I'm using in this tutorial is this one from Pixel Frog, and it's this pirate here. So if you want to use the same as me, go ahead and download it. And you can always take a look in the description below if you want the same asset as me. If you're interested in Unreal Engine 5 game development courses, you can visit my website gameinstruct.com. Here I make both single player and multiplayer courses with videos being released daily in 4K resolution. There's also a section for purchasing game ready assets and another tab for hiring me for private tutoring sessions. I'm available 24 seven on my Discord server to help you out and all of the links are in the description below. So here is the file I've downloaded, it's the Treasure Hunters and it's out of here. I'm going to use this one called Captain Clown Nose you can see the sprite of as well and here and the one with the sword so i'm just going to use this one you can use again any sprite you want it doesn't really matter for this uh, for this tutorial but what i want you to do is here in the assets folder i have an assets folder so you can create a new folder inside of here and again i'm just doing this to stay organized you can create a folder wherever you want and for this folder i'm going to call it characters and it is inside of here where i want to import my files so the first thing i want to import is this one called idle so go ahead and click and drag this into here and now it is imported now if you have a texture where you have all of the characters like this uh, together i can show you actually how you can extract them but for now i'm just going to import this character here so the idle animation and I need the run animation as well. So go ahead and import this. And the next thing is the jump animation. So jump sword. And that is all that we need right now. So we have an idle animation. We have a run animation. And we have a jump animation. Now if you also have a texture where all of the characters is in the same texture. And I want to show an example of this because this is really common. So if I just go into one of the other packs I have downloaded. This is actually how it is set up. So. I go to main characters, I go to the ninja frog, for example, you can see all of the textures are actually inside of the same image. So I'm just going to import this to show you how to deal with something like this as well. Now, when you have imported them, if you double click on the images or the textures, you can see they are blurred out and it doesn't look like pixel art because this looks good for 3D games, but it doesn't look good for 2D games. So this is an easy fix. You basically have to right click on it and go to sprite actions and then apply paper 2d settings and it will automatically remove all of the blur and it will look normal like pixel art and you can see you have to do this with all of the other ones so if i zoom in here it is also blurry so again right click here go to sprite actions and uh, not extract sorry apply paper 2d settings now if you double click on it and take a look at it now it looks normal so to do it very quickly click on the first one here hold shift Click on the last one, right click, apply paper 2D settings, and everything is now fixed. Go ahead and save everything. Now I'm going to right click here and making a new folder, and I'm going to call this one textures. I'm actually going to import all of this inside of here. For these characters, let's try to make them into an animated character because this is basically the goal here. So now let's start with the idle animation, and I can show you how to do it with separate images like this and how you can do it with. A, a, a texture that contains all of the images in one. So let's start with this one here. The way you do this is you have to right click here and then go to sprite actions and then create a sprite. A sprite is basically a static image in 2D. So if you go ahead and create it, as you can see here in my level, if I try to click and drag a normal texture, it doesn't work. It's going to replace actually my map with this guy here. So I'm going to click on Control Z. I'm going to delete this material it automatically created. Now it only works if you actually drag a sprite. So not a texture, but a sprite. So if I drag a sprite inside of here, now it is behind of my map. So I have to drag it in 
I can just do that here in the details panel where, where I can write the Y as zero and it is over here and I can drag this guy up here. And now you can see I can have this static image in my level as well. A sprite is simply just a static image in 2D, just like these trees, they, they can also be sprites and you can add them to your level. So let's do that with all of the other ones. So again, I'm going to select the number two to number five, hold right click and go, go to create sprite. So I'm going to create a sprite for all of them. Okay, so now with those sprites created, I can now hold or click here and hold shift and click on the last one to select all of them. And then right click and create a flipbook. And a flipbook is an animated asset. So a sprite is a static asset you can place in the world. And a flipbook is an animated asset you can place in the world. So go ahead and create a flipbook. And then I'm going to call this one FB for flipbook. And I'm going to call this clown nose because this is what the character is called. And I'm going to call it idle. And here you can see it if you hold the mouse over it. You can also double click on it and you can see what it looks like. You can also change the frames per second over here and you can basically reduce the animation speed of it. So I'm going to set it to 10 instead of 15 and this is what it looks like. Go ahead and click on save and close it down. Now I'm going to show you how to do it with this one. Again, we already applied paper 2D settings. So I'm basically going to right click here and instead of creating a sprite, you have to extract the sprites because you have multiple images of this character in one texture. So you have to extract the sprite first. And here you can see we have a new window. If you zoom in, here are all of them. So over here in the sprite extraction method, you have to set it to grid. And then you have to define the cell width and height. So you basically have to divide them equally. So here it is 32 pixels in the cell height. So I'm guessing it is 32 pixels as well in the width. So we have to guess here. If it is not 32, it is 16. If you're not 16, maybe you can try like 42, 46. You know, you have to just give it a try. But a good try is the same number as the one down here. So we can see they are now divided equally. 32 by 32 pixels are the sizes of those textures or this pixel out here. And then go ahead down here and click on the extract button. Go ahead and click on extract. And now you can see it has created sprites for all of them. And again, you can hold, click on the first one, hold shift. Click on the last one, right click, and then create a flipbook for this one as well. And now you can see I have this animated character working. If you want to increase the frames per second to animate it faster, you can do that as well by setting it here. But now you can see these are the two methods you can do it with. Now I'm going to delete this character because I actually don't need it for now. So I'm going to hit delete. It was just for showing you. I'm going to do it for the rest of them now. And I'm going to do it a lot quicker because it's the same method. So for the jump here, Right click, Sprite Actions, Create Sprites, and then again select all of them and then create a flipbook. I'm going to do that for the last one here, the run. So right click, Create Sprite, and then select them again, right click, and create a flipbook. And this one I'm going to call FB Clown Nose Run. And the other one I created here, I'm going to call Flipbook Clown Nose Jump. And again, I'm going to double click on it and set the frames per second to 10. And also for this one, I'm going to double click on it, set the frames per second to 10. And now we have it. So I'm going to select all of the flipbooks and just drag them out of the textures folder because technically we don't really need all of this anymore. We're not really going to touch it. So I like to have it in a textures folder just to stay organized and I can only look at those that I actually need. Now that we have the character assets that we need, let's go ahead and work with blueprints. So let's go ahead and, and code this character and make the movement. So to do this here in the content folder, I'm going to right click now, make a new folder called blueprints. And inside of here, usually for games, when we start making games, you have something called a game mode and a player controller. So let's go ahead and create those. Let's right click here and create a new blueprint. And here, let's create a player controller. And usually in the player controller, this is where we do the user interfaces and we do spawning of things into the world. For example, if we want to spawn a weapon, spawn an item, when we destroy something and things like that. So let's go ahead and create a player controller. And I usually call it PC for player controller. And I usually call it the name of the game. So this one I've called Mario. So let's just call it Mario. And again, right click 
go to blueprint class and let's create a game mode now and inside of a game mode this is where you define the game rules so for example the timer of this map or timer of the round how many points this guy has or how many coins you have and things like that so basically the rules and scoring of the game is inside of the game mode so go ahead and create a game mode here call it gm for game mode and I, again i call it the name of the game so gm mario now the final thing we need to create is the player so again let's right click here go to blueprint now for the player we usually create a character which is a 3d character but in this case we're going to work with 2d so we actually need to create a 2d character so go ahead and click on the all classes down here click on this button and if you search for paper this is basically what uh, pixel art is called in unreal engine so if you search for paper you see this one called paper character so this character up here is actually this character over here which is a 3d character but you can see there is a derivative class down here called paper character which we need to use so go ahead and click on it go ahead and click on select and let's call this one vp player and I usually like to make again folders and organize. So right click here, make a new folder called player. I'm going to add this one inside of here. So before we set up the player, let's go ahead and uh, set up the game mode and the player controller. So let's open up the game mode now. And again, if you close this game mode here and you open it up again, you see this window here. And don't get confused. You can always click on the button up here, open full blueprint editor, and you are back inside of here. So what you need to do here in the game mode is click on class defaults and then over here to the right you have something called the player controller and you have to change it to the player controller we just created. We don't want to use the, the default one that Unreal Engine uses, we want to use the one we just created. And then the next thing is here, here in the default pawn we want to spawn our VP player character and not the default pawn here. So let us click on compile and basically what compile means is it checks if you have errors in the code and if you don't have any then it's going to uh, give you a tick and everything is correct okay that is all that we need to do inside of here so let's close it down and let's click on edit go to project settings then click on maps and modes and inside of here let's change the default game mode to our game mode we just created also, if you want to start up with the map you have inside of here, so you see here I have a 2D map. So if you want to start up with it whenever you open up the engine and not this open world, which is the default map in Unreal Engine, you can always click here and change it to your own map that you have created. So just a small tip here. So let's close this down now. And the final thing we need to do with the game mode is click on the world settings here. And if you don't have the world settings, you can always click on window up here and go to world settings and open this tab so in the world settings go ahead and here in the game mode click on it and set it to gm mario again which is our own game mode now we are ready to work with the player so let's save all of the work up here click file save all and let's click here on the player and open up the player now inside of the player you have a viewport and you have the event graph where you can code all of the movement and things like that but let's go to the viewport now and actually see the player inside of here let's click on the sprite component and it is here where we add the flipbook we created so as you can see here we have this flipbook click on it here and let's add the idle flipbook for now so now you can see this is the idle flipbook that we have and I'm going to decrease this collision capsule, this capsule component. And I'm going to decrease it to something very small. If you notice here, if you decrease this one, you can't decrease it more than this one down here. So you actually have to decrease this one down here. It's a bit confusing, but I don't know why. But uh, you have to do it like this. So I'm just going to write 8 here and 8 here. And it is small enough. And uh, what this is doing here is basically collision. and when you spawn it into the game and this one is actually way too large like this your character is going to float because this one is going to hit the ground and you can see your character floating we can check it out uh, i'm just going to leave it like this so you can actually see later on what happens but now let's click on the add button up here and let's search for a spring arm so now we want to add a camera but before we add a camera we need to add a spring arm it is the holder for the camera so go ahead and add a spring arm and then click again now click on the spring arm and then click up here and search for camera 
go ahead and click on camera and add it as well so now you have the spring arm and then you have the camera make sure the spring arm is not inside of the sprites because else uh, you're going to have some bugs here so basically your spring arm needs to be outside of this sprite here so if it's inside you can basically just click and drag it out here on the capsule and it will be outside so now we need to position this camera correctly so clicking on the spring arm i'm clicking on the e uh, on my keyboard e button to rotate and you can also select the rotation tool up here if you wish to go ahead and click here and rotate it 90 degrees so it is on the character and we can see the character like this now here for the spring arm i'm also going to click on do collision testing and disable this one and what the collision testing is it's uh, used in 3d whenever you walk close to a wall the camera gets pushed like inside so it doesn't go into the wall and we don't really need to do that else we'll get a couple of bucks doing this the second thing is for the camera you have to click on it and change the projection mode to orthographic because now we're working with 2d and not 3d so we don't need perspective we need orthographic and what orthographic view is right now you can see we are in the perspective mode so this is what it looks like it looks a bit weird it looks like the trees are floating but if you click up here click on the right view this is the orthographic view so click on the right view this is what it looks like if your is if your um, a view is looking like a wireframe you can always click here and change it to unlit so it looks correct and basically this is what the orthographic view is it's simply like a 2d view so go ahead and click on the camera change it to orthographic view and here in the ortho width you can change how far away or how close the camera is to the character but you, you can't really change this one right now we have to set up the character in the game so you can see what it actually looks like but now we basically have the camera for the player finished and let's actually spawn the player inside of here and the way to do this is clicking up here and creating a player start so here in the basic go ahead and select player start so the game knows where you want to start or spawn the character so as you can see it's spawned out here you can also click on it here in the outliner if you don't know where it is click on f on the keyboard and it will automatically take you there go ahead and drag it into here i'm going to drag it here i'm actually going to go to the perspective mode it's a bit easier for me to work with here and also i'm going to reduce the size of it to 0 0.2 now it doesn't really matter it's just me i want it to have it like small like this so i can actually uh, work with placing it in the map without it being uh, super huge so now also when placing the player start you can always disable the snapping so clicking up here and i can place it smoothly without it snapping also make sure that you don't place your player start inside of the texture like this because then it's going to have bugs when you add collision and right now it doesn't say anything because if you click on play right now you can see the player is falling through the ground and let me just go back again this is because we don't have collision for the map yet and if you haven't created collision for the map yet let me show you how to do this so now let's go to the tile set so go over to the tile set that you have created for this tile map and open up the tile set so i have this one called tile set grassland and in this tile set you have this button up here called collision tiles and this is where you can see the collision now when i click on it nothing appears because i don't have any collision and if you click on the first tile you want to add collision for you can click here and add a box and now you can see now this tile has collision i can click on the second one add a box third one add a box so try to add collision to all of the tiles that you actually need it for now i clicked the wrong button i actually just need to close it down open it up again click on the lighting tiles and just continue adding collision to all of the tiles now the problem is here in unreal engine you can't select multiple tiles so it's a bit annoying i hope they fix it uh, sometime because it's a bit uh, like a boring work to select every single one and add a collision instead of selecting multiple ones all right now i added collision to all of the tiles that i want and then what you need to do uh, because as you can see here if i go back to my map and i click on show and i show the collision which you can also show with alt c so showing it you can see nothing happens even though i added collisions you have to click on refresh map up here if you do this you can see all of the collision appears so remember to do a refresh map whenever you have finished adding collision 
Now, you can see here for this playlist.now, if I take it down here, you can see it says bad size. And this is because now it is inside of the collision and it doesn't really like that. So you need to have it outside of the collision for it to not bug out. And now if you click on play, you can see the character has spawned. Now you can see the character is flying and we don't really want to do that. And remember what I told you before, this is because here in the player, we increased this capsule too much. So I'm going to reduce it to eight as well for this one. And I click play. And now you can see my character is spawning correctly. Now my character is spawning, as you can see, behind the tiles. And this is because this player start is behind my tiles. You can see it is minus 0 0.19 and my tiles are actually, actually at zero. So I'm actually going to put it at one here in the Y. So it is always in front of the tiles. I'm going to click on play and here it is. Here is my character. Everything is looking good. What I want to do is I want to adjust the camera slightly. So I, I want to spawn the player maybe here instead. And the second thing is I like my camera to be a bit more upwards. So it's not down this much. So clicking on the spring arm itself. And here in the in the Z axis, I'm going to increase it slightly. So click and drag to increase the size here. Or I can just write a number. I'm just going to write 40. So when I click on play now, I have it a bit more upwards and not in the ground. I'm actually going to click up here and play it as a new editor window. I like to do that so I have it up in front of me. So now we have the character, but we don't have any movement. And also before I do anything else, if you have used a character from another pack and it doesn't really fit your tiles, what you can do is you can always go back to the texture of that character. So this character that I'm using is from another pack than this tile map. So you can see the, the colors don't, doesn't really fit together. This is a lot of uh, green and this one is a bit desaturated. So it looks like they don't fit together. So the way you actually adjust this, if you wish to, you can drag a sprite. So this sprite, for example, and I can drag it here in the world. And then I can double click the same texture for it. So this one, idle saw 01 sprite has this texture. So idle saw 01 texture, double click on it and open it up. And inside of this texture, you can see some adjustments that you can do here, down here. You have some brightness, vibrance, saturations, and things like that. So for example, I want to increase the brightness. I think it's a bit too dark. So if I just uh, have it here in my view, I can increase the brightness to something like three, four. You can see you can adjust it. Uh, this is too extreme. So I think I'll use something like 1.8. And also down here, I think it, it loses a lot of color by doing this. So I want to add some color. So 1.2 in the RGB curve. You can see it's super huge uh, adjustment. So don't go too large with it or too insane with it. And as you can see, it looks a lot better. So before what it looked like is this one. So if I drag in the second texture, uh, the second sprite, sorry. So now you can see the difference. This is what it looked before, looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. And I think it fits a lot with the environment. Now you have to do this with all of them. And the easiest way to do this is if you select all of the textures, so go ahead and select all of the textures you need to adjust it for, and then you right click, go to uh, asset action, and then edit selection in property matrix. And then go ahead and click on adjustments. And inside of here, remember for the brightness, I set it to 1.8. And for the RGB curve, I set it to 1.2. So now it actually applied all of these settings for all of the textures that I have selected. Go ahead and click on save all. And now you are ready to go. So let's go ahead and add the movement now for the player. Everything is working, but we are missing the movement. For the movement, to begin with, let's right click, make a new folder, and I'm going to call it input. Inside of this folder, let's right click, go to input, and add the first one called input mapping context. Go ahead and call it IMC for input mapping context. I'm just going to call it default. Now, inside of this mapping context, we can click on the plus up here and clicking on the small arrow to see what we added. Now, inside of here, you can see you cannot select anything. This is because you need an input action as well. So let's minimize this for now and let's right click here, go to input, add an input action now. So these are the two we're going to use. So you have one mapping context and then you have multiple input actions. For example, hitting spacebar to jump, clicking E to interact, hitting the uh, mouse one button to attack and things like that. So 
clicking on the input action call it ia for input action and i'm just going to call it for movement because this is what we're doing so the uh, wa is the movement so go ahead and double click on this input action and the only thing we really need to do here is the value type we need to change it to an axis 1d because we need to move to the right and the left so we need some movement this is one axis so basically if you click on anything inside of here uh, if i just add something at this flipbook if i click on it you can see we need to move on the x-axis so the red arrow here is the x-axis so this is just an axis 1d we just need to move along this axis so go back to the inputs now for this input action let's add it to the input mapping context let's click now and now you can see we can see it here go ahead and click on it and again click on the small arrow to see more here so to add a key you have to click on this tab here and the first key i want to add is d to move to the right so I can click on D and then I can find the key here. Now it is inside of here, but as you can see, it is a bit difficult sometimes to go through all of this. So the easiest way to do this is actually clicking on this icon and click on D on the keyboard and it will assign it to the key that you have clicked. So click on this plus again, I'm going to add the A key. So clicking here, clicking A on the keyboard and we're finished here. So here in the movement, we can press D to move to the right and we can press A to move to the left. Let's close everything down now and let's go to blueprints and let's open up the player that we created. Now inside of the event graph, let's delete everything for now. I like to start from the beginning, save everything here. So to begin with, let's right click and search for the begin play event. So this is the simplest event in blueprint and it basically tells you what should I do when I begin playing the game. Let's right click here and now say get player controller. We need to get this player controller so if you click on it now you can see this is the player controller this is the default player controller in unreal engine and we don't really need to use the default one we want to use this one that we created earlier this player controller called pc mario and the way you do this is if you drag from here now and you say cast 2 so this is how you communicate in unreal engine with other blueprints so cast 2 and then you have to call it the same name as what you called it. So I called it PC Mario. So you can go ahead and click on it here and then connect this. So now what I can do is from this pin, I can use anything that is inside of this blueprint. But uh, what we need to use is something called enhanced input system. So if you just search for enhanced, it's a super long name, enhanced input local player subsystem. I never remember it. So I just write enhanced. And you can get it here now for this casting if you have watched my courses or tutorials i don't really like them because they create hard references which slows down your game when you open it up for the first time and you can improve this by creating blueprint interfaces now this tutorial is not really about blueprint interfaces you can watch one of my other videos if you wish to improve this here but nothing wrong with this code so let's go ahead and continue for this player controller before we continue you have to drag here and say is valid. So you have to make sure that this player controller is valid before you continue. So go ahead and select this one. And now it is automatically connected. And also for the enhanced uh, local subsystem here, you also have to drag and say is valid. Go ahead and select it and connect it to the is valid up here. So making sure that the player controller is valid and making sure that the player subsystem is invalid too else sometimes you're actually going to get a bug if you click on play and play the game. Now, when you make sure all of this is valid, you can drag from here and say add mapping context. So now you can add the mapping context and then you have to select, remember to select which mapping context you're talking about. And I'm talking about this one. Now that we have added the mapping context, let's go ahead and start with the movement. What you need to do is you need to right click here and then you have to search for the for the input action that you created. Now, if I go back and I take a look at this input action I created, I called it IA movement. So you have to write the same name as what you called it. So if I open this up again here and right click and I search for IA movement, I can see it here and I can select this event. So now you can see it creates it as an event. So remember, you have to, uh, you have to uh, call it or write it as you called it here in your own input action. 
So now that we have it, I'm just going to drag and say print string. And a print string simply prints a message to the screen. And I simply do this because I want to see if it actually works if I press something. And if I click on play now and I click on D on my keyboard, you can see I, it actually prints hello. And if I click on A, so A and D, it prints hello, everything is fine. Sometimes you get a bug where you have all of this set up and nothing is happening when you press. This is because sometimes the code loads too fast or the game starts up too fast and this input player subsystem hasn't loaded up yet. So what you have to do in this case, if you have this bug, you have to delay this code. So drag from here, say delay, and you have to delay it by something super minimal. So I don't like delays. Uh, so something like 0.02, I believe is fine, or 0.01. So super, super low delay. No one will notice uh, unless you have superpowers and you can click on play. And now you can see it prints as well. I'm just going to leave it here for now so you can see the code. I'm going to drag this closer like this. And now we are ready to do all of this. Now for the movement, let's go ahead and drag from here and say add movement input. This is the function that we need to use to add movement. So go ahead and select add movement input. For the target, it is self, that is fine. Now for the direction, we need to right click and say get actor forward vector. So getting the actor forward vector. Go ahead and connect this and for the scale value it is simply this action value here so we can click and drag and connect it here and actually we are finished with the movement so basically we need to do the animation so you can see how quick it is as you can see i can move however you notice when i click on a i actually move wrong way so if i click on a it actually moves to the right which is not correct so let's go ahead and fix this let's open up the mapping context and here for the A key and the input action, go ahead and click on this small arrow to see more options. And in the modifiers, click on the plus, click up here, click on negate, and it will invert the movement for it. So now if we click on play, I click on D to move to the right, I click on A to move to the left. So now you can see the movement is correct. If you wish to control how quick the character is moving, you can always click on the character movement component for this player, and you can you can change things like gravity and the walk speed is simply the run speed so max walk speed i'm going to change this one to something like 150 instead and you can change things like the mass of this character how high the floors you can uh, walk on and for this max step height i'm actually going to decrease it to zero because sometimes there are bugs where you if you have it too high and you are standing on this platform actually uh, that you can see to the right and if you fall down from it, you just fall down instantly, super quick. And this is because it, it thinks that it is a slope that you just walk down from. And uh, you can basically try to set it to 45 and you can test it out yourself uh, when you fall from a platform. But I'm going to set it to zero for now, compile. And now you can see when I click on play, I'm moving nicely around. And again, you can change your acceleration speed. So for example, you're going to set it to 100 and you can see what it looks like. So you acceler accelerate like quicker and quicker, but I like to have it a high number. Sometimes I actually like to put a zero inside of here. So I accel accelerate like quickly and I don't have any delay. Let us now add the animation for this character. And I think uh, this part of the tutorial is the most fun out of all because now we can see the character animated. And to do this first, I need to create an enumeration. So I'm going to right click here, make a new folder called enums. And let's open it up here. Let's right click, go to blueprint and create this one called an enumeration. Now, any enumeration, don't get confused. It's just a list and can be a list of anything. I'm going to call it E movement states and let's open it up. So basically here, the enumeration, you can see it is a list and you can click on this, uh, this button here to add things to this list. Again, it can be a list of anything. It can be a list of weapons. It can be a list of hairstyles. It can be a list of groceries. In this case, what we're using it for is a list of movement states in this game. So right now I have the idle state and then I have the run left and then I have the run right. And then let's also add another one called jump. You can also add more uh, later on. For example, you can add attack. You can add 
for example, interact, if you have an animation for this, and so on. So I'm just going to delete this once for now. We just have idle, run left and right, and then we can jump as well. Now let's go to the player and let's create a new function. I'm going to call this function f set movement state. So this function is what will be responsible for setting the movement state for us. Now clicking on this function, I'm going to click on this input. So clicking on the plus to add a variable. And here in the variable type, we're not going to select those ordinary variables that we have. We're going to select the one we just created. So if you search for it by searching for the name that you called it. So I called it eMovementStates. So clicking here, searching for eMovementStates. And here I have it. Go ahead and click on it. And then just call it for movement states. Go ahead and compile and save. Now, for now, I don't want to confuse you too much inside of this function. I think we should just uh, do the code outside of here and we can go back here and, uh, and see what we need to add to this function. So let's go back to the event graph now. And what we need to do here in the movement input, when we move to the right, we need to animate the character to be moving. And when we move to the left, we need to make it move uh, to the left, basically. So let us uh, try to make a print string. And this is, again, print strings are super powerful to uh, try to code correctly. Basically, what you can do here is you can drag from this action value and you can plug it into here. And then you can see what it prints out. So we know what we're coding. So if I walk to the right, you can see it prints one on the screen here to the, to the left. And if I click on A to move to the left, uh, it says minus one. So this information, I can actually use it for my advantage to add the animation. So let's try from this one. And we can say if this is greater, so if you make the symbol here, if it is greater than zero, we can drag from here and make a branch. So now we can do something if this is true and if we can do some, something else if this is false. And if it is true, if it is above zero, remember when we walk to the right, it is above zero. So this, is, this means we're actually running to the right. So we can drag this set movement state that we made and connect it here. And we can basically set it to run right. And the reason why we actually have this tab here that you can see called movement state is because we clicked on this function and then we added this variable called movement states. And it's going to automatically add all of the items, all, the, all of the list items that you have created. So if I create a new one, and I call this one attack later on and I go back to the player and I click on it, I can actually set it to attack as well. So I'm just going to go back here, delete it for now, save. So now we're setting it to run, uh, run right when, when it is above zero. Now the code itself is not doing anything because we haven't coded anything inside of this function, but now we at least have this logic here. Okay, so let's continue. When you drag from here, so when it is less than zero, let us drag from here and make a new branch connected to the false here. So if it is above zero, we run to the right. However, if it is false, we check then, it is, is it under zero? If that is true, let's copy and paste this. Then we want to run to the left. However, if it is not, if it is neither over zero or below zero, it means it is actually zero. And let's copy paste this and connect it here and set it to idle. So now we have the animations down correctly. Now, when you click on play and try to play, you see nothing is really happening. And this is because we haven't coded anything inside of this function. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's super easy. We can drag from this enumeration and we can say switch. And you have something called switch on enumeration. So go ahead and select it. And what this does is it gives you multiple options. So if this value, this movement state here, if the value is idle, we can play one code. If it is run left, we can play another code and so on. And it knows what this value is depending on what you set it out here. So if I'm standing still, it will be idle. So it will go inside of this function and it will play the code from the idle and it will ignore everything else. And simply what we need to do is we need to play the flipbook. So we need to play the idle flipbook, run left flipbook and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. And to play the flipbook, we can drag this sprite, uh, add it here. And we can drag from here and say set flipbook. Go ahead and select this function. And we can connect it to the first one and we can make all of the other ones later. So the first one here is we want to set 
this one to idle. So if you search for idle, go ahead and select your flipbook. Now for the run left, I'm just going to copy paste this again. And then we can search for run. Now for the run left and right, we only have something called run. So we have to rotate the character as well. So here when I run to the right, I want to rotate my character by a 100 minus 180 degrees in the Z. So if I just add my character, you can see why we are rotating through the Z axis. So if I just add this flipbook into the level, if I click on it and I hit E on the keyboard, you can see here it is actually the Z that we are affecting. The blue, the blue color here is the Z val uh, Z axis. So it's the Z axis when we want to run left and right. So this is the one we are rotating. So let's go back here and let me take this sprite again, copy paste it here, or you can simply just drag it from here. That is fine. And then drag and say set relative rotation. And go ahead and select this one called set relative rotation, connect it, and then let's set it to minus 180 because this is how we want to rotate it. However, whenever we want to run right here, so running left, we want to rotate it because again, just to show you to not get you confused, when we run left, we want to rotate this by 180 degrees like this. However, when we run right again, we want to set it back to zero here. So unrotated. So let's do that. Let's just copy all of this, copy paste it, go out and connect it here and set this one to zero again. So we rotate it when we run to the left. However, we rotate it back when we run to the right. Now here for the jump, let's copy this again and you can connect it and again, select the jump super easy. If you want to improve this code, you can actually delete all of those sprites and you can just connect this one to all of the targets here instead. If you wish to, you can do the same one or same thing here. You can basically just connect it here, delete this one and have it a bit cleaner like this. So now when I click on play and I move to the right, you can see it is animating correctly. When I move to the left, it is animating correctly as well. Now, the problem is when I stop, uh, you can see the idle animation is not playing. And the reason for this is, is because if I go back here and I take a look at my input action for the movement, this is only played whenever you press the button. Whenever you don't press the button, this will not be played and thus it will not go down and play this code because when it is zero, it's actually not playing this code. So what you need to do for now is you click on the small arrow and here in the completed, this is when you let go of the button. You need to play here, set the movement state. So go ahead and connect it and set it to idle. Go ahead and click on play now. And you can see now it is working perfectly. So you can move around and it will idle correctly. Now everything is working correctly. And now we are ready to do the jump. So now to do the jump, it is super easy. Again, before we do all of this, let's create an input action for it. So if we go back to the input folder, let's right click here, go to input and create a new input action. For this input action, I'm going to call it IA jump. And now for this input action, we don't really need to do anything inside of here. Let's close it down. And in the input mapping context, let's click on the plus up here and let's add this input action called jump. I click on the small arrow down here. Click on this button and I hit my space bar to uh, select the space bar for the jump. Now, again, if you want to add uh, the movement here to your, uh, to your arrow keys as well, you can basically do that by clicking here, clicking on the, uh, to the right, to the left, if you wish to. And again, here, remember for the left, you have to add the modifier negate, just like what we did before. And simply you have the right and left here. Now, if you also want to add your controller, you can also do it inside of here. But this uh, this tutorial is not about controllers, but you can search for the gamepad and you can see all of this here as well. But let's delete it for now. Let's have just the space bar for the jump. And here in the triggers, I'm going to click here and set it to pressed. And the reason I do this is because if you don't set it, you can simply spam this key. And I can actually show you uh, how what happens if you don't do it. So if I go back to blueprints now, now that you have set the input action, let's go back to the player and open up the player. And just like before, right click here and search for IA jump and go ahead and add this event. Now, if you couldn't find it, uh, remember you have to write the name as what you have written here. So I called it IA jump so I can find it as IA jump here. Remember to write it 
the same name as what you've wrote it here. So now I have it and I can make print string to see if it actually plays and I can hit play here and I can click on space and you can see it, it says hello every time I click on space. If you have not set this pressed trigger and I click on play and I hit space and I hold my space, you can see I can just spam this key. And this is not really the purpose of jumping. You just want to press it one time and it, it's going to jump. So setting it to press here, going back to player. And now let us do the jump code. Now in Unreal Engine, you have a function called jump and it is already made for you. So if you click on play now and you hit space bar, you can see you're jumping. So it's already working uh, super quick. And also here in the character movement, you can search for jump and you can also adjust the jump velocity. So how far up you can jump. For example, I want it to 350. Let's say that. So now you are jumping a bit lower than before. Okay, so now for the jumping, I also want to set my movement state. So let's connect it to jump and let's play now. And now I can see here if I click on jump, you can see it's playing my my uh, animation here. However, when I land, it's not really going to play my idle animation. And also the second thing is my jump animation is looping just like when I run to the right and run to the left, it is looping like when I jump and I don't really want to do that. It looks a bit stupid. So if I go to the set movement state and we basically have to set that whenever we jump, we don't want to loop the flip book. So let us drag the sprite here and we have something called set looping. Go ahead and select it and we want to set it to false and go ahead and connect it here. Now we don't want to set it to false for every single flip book here because we want to loop it when we run to the right and left and idle and so on. So it's simply just for the jump. So the way to do this, you can either take it like this and you can basically just run it after every single one. So like this and for these, it can be true and you can basically just connect all of them and everything is finished like this here and everything will work just fine. However, what I like to do is I like to write cleaner code. So to do this, I'm just going to connect it here and I'm going to drag from here and say select. And if you just scroll down, you have this one function called select. Go ahead and uh, select it here. And now it needs an index. So what should you select from? So I, I want to select from this movement state. So if I just connect this movement state here, and now you can see, you can see all of the items that you have from the enumeration list. So now you can select, now you can set it to if it should loop when you're idle, when you're jumping and so on. So for the idle run left and right, I want to, uh, I want to uh, loop it. However, for the jump, I don't want to set it to looping. So this is a bit cleaner than having them out here. The second thing is, uh, you notice here when you click on play and you do this, and when I jump now, and I basically set it to not looping and it looks correct. However, when I run to the uh, left and right here, you can see it's not looping anymore, even th though we have set it to looping. This is because for some reason you also have to play it. So uh, you have to take the sprite again and say play and go ahead and select it here. And now it's going to play. So for some reason, you have to play it again before it works. So now if I jump, it doesn't loop. However, if I run to the right and left, it works uh, perfect, just fine. Now, uh, the problem is whenever we land, it's not really playing the idle animation. So this is the final step here. Let's save everything and let's go back to the event graph. So what we have to do, we have to check if the player is falling. And the way we do this is we can right click and we can make a custom event, which we will use. So add a custom event and let's call this one check is falling because whenever we are not falling anymore, we want to set the movement state to idle. And the way we do this, we can use a timer. So if you search timer by event, so this one set timer by event, and then you have to make a new event here. So dragging from this event input, and you can make another custom event. I'm just going to call this one check is falling loop because it's basically just a timer that loops again and again. And now you have to set it to how fast do you want to check if you are falling or not. So what we're doing with this one is we're checking if we have landed on the ground. When we have landed on the ground, we want to set the movement state to idle. Now for the time for this timer, I'm going to set it to 0 0.05. But basically what you have to calculate here, the faster you run this timer, the more unoptimized your game will be. So for example, if I 
what you have to do is basically this is how many times a second you want to run this timer. So for example, one divided by 0 0.05, this is 20 times a second. So now you, we're actually running this timer 20 times a second, which is fine. It's not bad, but don't set it to something like 0 0.01 because then you're actually running this, uh, this timer here 100 times per second, which is super quick. So try to set it as high as possible. But if you set it too high, like 0 0.1, it will feel a bit laggy because you're not checking too much if you're on the ground or not, and maybe the idle animation plays too, too slow. So I'm going to set it to 0.05. Again, you can test it out when you finish the jump here. I'm going to set it to looping because I want to check here. And to check if the player is jumping or not, you can basically take this character movement. You can drag from here and search for is falling. So we're basically checking if the player is in the air or not. Then we can drag from here and make a branch. And when it is true, if we are in the air, we don't really want to do anything. However, if we have landed on the ground, we want to stop this timer. So uh, we don't want to run this forever. So let's right click here first and promote this to a variable. Uh, we need this variable to stop this timer. So I'm going to call it check is falling timer. If I can spell here, falling timer handle. And if you hold the mouse over it, it's basically saying that this is a timer handle. This is why I call the timer handle. And you can drag here. And you can drag from this one and say clear and invalidate timer by handle. So this is how you stop this timer. Then after we're doing this, let's go ahead and set the movement state to idle. So what we're doing is we're checking for falling. And we're basically doing that 20 times a second right now. And if we are falling, we don't want to do anything. However, if we're not falling anymore, meaning that we actually landed on the ground, we want to stop this timer and now we want to play the idle animation. And we want to call this event right after we jump. I'm just going to call it here. Check is falling. So now we're running this. And now let's try it out. So if I click on play, I jump and I land. It looks super correct. However, now if I run around and I jump, you can see nothing is really happening because we only added this code to whenever we hit on the space bar. But uh, this is actually going to uh, get replaced uh, here, the, this jump here, this jump animation. This is going to get replaced because remember you're running this code as well and you're actually replacing it with all of these here. And the way you fix this is simply by just extending the code slightly here. So again, checking the character movement, say check is falling, or not check is falling, sorry, is falling, basically this function here uh, that we used before, and make a branch. And if we are not falling, we just want to do whatever we did before, so all of this code here. However, whenever we are falling, we want to play this jump, set movement state to jump, because now we're actually in the air. And then we want to, again, check is falling. So we want to play this code over here again. So check is falling. And now everything should work just fine. Also, there is another fix down here, but I just want to show you first before we do this. So now if I run and jump, and you can see here, everything is working fine. The problem is right now is if I jump and I stop here midair, you can see that it changes to the idle animation. And remember, this is because when you're not pressing anymore, it's going to automatically change it to idle. And we only want to do that whenever we are not jumping. So let's again copy this code, paste it down here, make a branch, and then connect it to here. So whenever we are not falling, we want to set it to idle. Okay, we are almost finished. So if I click on play now, and I run around and I stop midair, you can see it is working correctly. Now the final bug here is if you run around and then you fall, you can see there there is a clip in clipping in the animation. Like when you, it automatically changes to the idle animation whenever you land. So there it, it looks like it's lagging or something. And this is because uh, here in the is falling, whenever you're not falling anymore, it automatically sets it to the idle animation even though you're running. So it looks like it changes to the idle animation slightly and then it changes back to running and jumping and all of that. So this one, this code here, we only want to idle when we're actually not running. So let's go ahead and do this final, final step. And the way to do this is the easiest way is just this action value. Let's right click and promote this to a variable. And let's call this one 
movement action value. Go ahead and connect this one. Now for this movement action value, so what you can do is drag here and click on set. And here in the completed, basically set it to zero because now you're not running anymore. And what we can do with it down here, whenever we stop the timer, we can take this movement action value and we can drag from it and say, is this equal to zero? And make a branch here. If it is equal to zero, this means we're not pressing a button and it means we're idle. Then we can play the idle animation. Click on compile, click on play, and now everything should work just fine. So you can see I'm running. It's not really lagging in the animation. I can change the direction when I'm jumping. You can see I can actually change direction during the jump, which is nice. And again, you can control all of this control in the air, like when your character is jumping, how much can you change uh, the direction and things like that. All of it can be found here. You can see the jumping and falling, the air control, the air boost multiplier. So you can play with all of those values if you wish to. Now you can see the jumping is working. We can jump around. No, nothing is bugging out and everything is working just fine. So that is how you do the Unreal Engine 5 to the game character movement. And I hope uh, this tutorial was useful for you. Again, please write in the comments below if you need any help or if you need to see uh, some tutorials that you wish to see here for this channel and I will create it for you. And also uh, remember to visit my website on gameinstruct.com if you wish to see more complete uh, tutorials or courses for game development, both 2D and 3D. Uh, and remember also to subscribe and like this video if you wish to see more content of this kind. So. I hope this helped you and thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one.